the blood was enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I just feel like praising the Lord this morning. There is a, some things that I want to share. And I just want to have a talk time with whoever will come on and watch whoever's coming on. Um, I am Tessa Denise, your spiritual empowerment leader, human behavior consultant, and author. But today I am coming to you as Mama Tedra. I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you like I talk to my, my grown children. I, I just want to have a good old conversation with you. But I want to start this off by worshiping God and praising God because he deserves our praise. I think we get so focused on what is going on in this world with the COVID, with the um politics and in the political arena and everything that we kind of lose our focus. God is God is the main thing. Let the main thing be the main thing. Salvation and redemption and trying to get people souls right. Get their spirits right with the Lord. Get their souls for eternity right. Amen. So I want to worship the Lord this morning um, or this afternoon, this evening, whatever it is for you. I want to worship the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. I am listening to Cassie Taylor, one of her live events that she had did for a previous women conference that I was at. There is nothing like the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, it covers multitudes of sins. The blood of Jesus, it heals the sick. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah, brings protection. When you think about the story of how the blood, they God told them to put the blood over their doorpost and all the disease of the firstborn child would pass over them. The plague would pass over their house if they put put the blood over their doorpost. The enemy or that 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 um, plague knew to go past that house that had the blood on it. Every man, amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Along with the blood of Jesus came so much. Oh Lord, it came so so much. Your healing comes with the blood of Jesus. Your salvation comes with the blood of Jesus. Protection comes with the blood of Jesus. Your heritage in the in all in the sonship of God comes with the blood of Jesus. So in this song, she's talking about the blood was enough. It is enough. The blood should be, it should be enough for everything. It should be enough to console you. It should be enough to bring a peace peace to your mind. It should be enough to know that when your children isn't acting right and they're out there in the world or you just don't know where they are or what's going to happen to them, the blood should be enough to set your mind at peace and know, okay, God, if I put them on the altar, if I put them in your hands, dear Lord, I know that I know that I know you will take care of them. Father, the blood is enough. Jesus died on the cross for our sins that we may be able to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, that we may be able to receive salvation, that we may be able to receive forgiveness by just merely asking our Father. Father God, can we I ask you for forgiveness? And those of you who say, okay, I, every day I'm asking God to forgive me. Every day I'm asking him to forgive me for something because I'm just, I don't have this thing right. I, I don't have things right. I, I keep messing up here. I, I messed up there. And I know I need some er There's some areas that I need to work on. And um, when you, I want you to know this. When you ask God to forgive you, all it takes is that one time. One time, um, we are the ones that are hard on ourselves because is we, we allow the enemy to keep, keep, Put in that thing that uh, we did wrong and we already asked for forgiveness, but the enemy keep bringing it to our mind and we condemn ourselves when God is, has not condemned us for it. 
He once you ask for forgiveness, he forgives us and he, he forgets about it. He throws it away. He no longer holds that thing over our head. But the enemy does and the devil does. And not only does the devil not only does the devil do it, but um so does people and individuals. They will take your all the, the stuff that you did in the past, things that you did in the past that was wrong or the mistakes you made, and you have already asked God for forgiveness for it, but they still hold that over your head. I need you to tell them that that's under the blood. I need you to say that's under the blood and keep moving. I need you to say it's under the blood and keep moving. God has already forgiven me for that. And whoever you've hurt or whoever um, you you've caused that um, that pain to you, ask them to forgive give you. It's up to them to forgive you. Either they will or they won't. But once you ask them to forgive you, you have done your job. And then um, you ask God to forgive you. Hey, it's done. It's over with. Don't let that stuff don't don't let people hold that stuff over you. And don't you hold that over you. Amen. The blood is enough. Y'all got to know that. Glory to God. Well, I had a lot of things on my mind today. I was, um, I had my grandchildren over yesterday. And as you know, with the COVID going on, you, you we have, we all are being very careful and, and um, keeping our social distancing. And I'm the kind of person, I'm a loving, loving, hugging, touching kind of person. And so we've been uh, trying to be very cautious and careful with one another, respecting each other's space and, to, and uh, all these things during the COVID. Well, um, we just wanted to spend some time together. So it was my grand, my granddaughters and and my my daughter, my granddaughter, she was over and she's a teacher. And so she did some of her schooling online here. It, it was a great time. So once all of us got our little work done, we were all doing our work. We watched a movie and one of the and the movie that we chose to watch was Matilda. Do you all know that movie? We chose to watch Matilda. Do you know it is beginning as a Christian to be so challenging to find a television show or movie to watch that doesn't have something in it that you'll have to explain to the children. OK, this is this isn't right. It shouldn't be this or this is what you. it's a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> so there's how there's. It is a challenge choosing television shows, cartoons, movies to watch with the family and watch with the children at this time. I remember when my kids were little, I did not watch, let them watch scary movies. Um, I was just like, no, you can't do that. I didn't let them watch scary movies. I didn't let them play with guns. I did it when they was growing up and they, they'll talk. They'll, they will um, confirm that. <laughs> that I know I didn't even let them play with water guns and now and as soon as they got um old enough and they was able to mess with that stuff without me knowing it uh they they did but my whole point is that I didn't allow it and right now trying to monitor what your children watch and what they um are hearing and listening to and viewing is very challenging. We picked out the movie Matilda to watch. And so I I had never seen it before. And I asked my 13 year old granddaughter, I said, uh, what is, you know, what is this about? Cause she saw it before I think she said she saw it before. I said, is, a, is she, this a girl witch? Is it, is she a witch? And she said, no, mama, she's not a witch. And then the young, my younger granddaughter that's seven said, um, no, she's not a witch. She doesn't have a broom. And, and I said, I said, witches, witches, all witches don't have brooms, babe. All witches don't have brooms. She said, oh, well, I thought they all had brooms and they were ugly. I said, nope, all witches are ugly. She said, witches are ugly. So we got on this conversation about witches. And as we were watching the movie, the movie started off pretty good. Okay, she's different. She just got, she, she 
Matilda was different. So we talked about her being different. But then there came a scene where Matilda was learning how to use her special gifts. And um, part of her special gifts was the ability, uh, was my manipulation, was she was able to make things move with her mind. If she looked at it and she thought about it, she could make th things move. And she uh, could, even people, little the, her little friends in her classroom and everything, she can let them fly or control them. Now, her actions and what she was doing was for the good. She was protecting her teacher. She was protecting her classmates and she didn't do anything evil. You know, she, she was a good person. Hi, Tommy, welcome. Hello, yeah, I'm on on too. I'll be on Thursday too. I, I just want to have a um talk today. I just want to come on and have a talk and talk about the, the word of God and some things that I am noticing and that I believe as Christians that we need to pay attention to. So um, we was watching the Matilda television show uh, movie with the grandkids. I was watching them with the girls yesterday and um, the scene came on when she was Matilda was like pointing at the things in the classroom, the curtains and the different things, and they will move and they will go up. And so she was controlling things with her hand and her mind. And I was like, I looked at my granddaughter, my thir the 13 year old, I said, now that's kind of, that's that, that right there. That's like what witches and warlocks do. And so um, I said, that's magical and mystical. And so these are certain things that we have to be careful of and, and um, watch for. So in watching this movie, I'm explaining to them what these different things are. And it is important for us as adults to begin to teach our children about spiritual things. Because it's real. There is a spiritual realm. We are living. The, your body is flesh. Your body is the natural. This table is the natural. The computer is the natural. But there is a spiritual realm. And if you read and you study your New Testament Bible, you will know that there is a spiritual realm. If there was not a spiritual realm for us to be concerned about, the Apostle Paul would not have to teach his church about being... Um, being watchful and being vigilant. And he would not have had to teach the church to test the spirits and try the spirits so that you can discern the false prophets from the um, true prophets. There, if there was not a concern about the spiritual realm, in the New Testament, Paul would not have told us in Ephesians that the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It, the, and um, that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the dark and darkness. This, this is real. It is a real thing. And I believe with everything in me that this is a season and time in which I have my Bible here that I am looking at. If you're wondering what I'm looking down at, I'm looking at my Bible. This is a season and time in which we need to be speaking to our children and we need to become the light in the midst of the darkness, letting them know that there, there are things that they um need to know and be in control of and be in aware of. And we have the ability to do that for them, to enlighten their understanding, to give them wisdom and give them knowledge as they begin to, to um, deal with things of this world. 
there are so many of our youth ranging from the age of eight to 29 that are dealing with depression, anxiety, suicide, all these things that um, with the mind. Why do you think that is happening? The enemy is attacking their mind and they do not know how to conquer it and fight against it. My youngest granddaughter, well, the younger granddaughter yesterday, she said, um, I'm just not having the best of luck today. Mama, I'm not having luck. I'm, there's no good luck for me. And I said, baby, we don't believe in luck. It's not about luck because God blesses us. And then he tells us what we need to do um, to, to have a good day. He said, think on these things, which are good thoughts. So now sweetheart, what I have to do is help you to think good things, to say things like, oh, I am having a great day. Oh, my day is going to be wonderful. Mama, today is an amazing day. Or when she's getting frustrated with her work because she can't figure it out instead of saying, I can't do this. I, I'm just, I'm not a good child. Uh, you know, these, t these type of things, instead of saying those things, I have to change her mindset and change those words and say, I can do this. And it's funny because we actually, I'm going to post the video on my blogging channel. We did a video and I think I said I can't. Something I did, I said I can't. I said I can't do this. Oh, I can't sing very well is what I said. I said I can't sing very well. And she said to me, oh, mama, we don't use the word can't. She used the, she used it back on me. We don't use the word can't. We, we don't say we can't, mom. We say we can. You can. You can do it. And so it's funny because we bounce those words back and forth off of each other. So yesterday was a day in which I was telling her, you can, you can, you can. So I am in the book of Ephesians. Um. <clears throat> and I am going to start with um, Ephesians 5, 8, and then I want to go into Ephesians chapter 6, because there, I want you to know there is an enemy, and we need to be aware of the enemy. Um, oftentimes, in several of my videos, I have said it is not personal is spiritual. A lot of times we take things out on people and um, we get upset and we get angry with them and we take it personal. Somebody makes a choice and decision. We take it personal, but it's not personal. It really was not meant to be personal. It's a spiritual thing. And so as believers, we need to know how to discern between the two. So we are not reacting in an inappropriate way. We are not giving back to the enemy what he is dishing out to us through someone that we may love, we may care for, we have feelings for, or we um, admire, uh, whatever the case may be. So let me read this. Ephesians 5, 8 says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them. He hear these words. I'm going to repeat them. I need you to hear them again. Ephesians chapter five, verse eight in the New International Version reads, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness. Did you hear? The fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. This is how we as believers want to live our life. And then we live our life like that. And then we have help others to live their life this way. 
exposing, verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. We are in a, we are living in a society that accepts darkness, that accepts the unfruitful works of darkness. We are becoming so liberal that we don't say anything about the things that are considered to be unfruitful works of darkness to the Lord. The Bible says here, according to Paul, in Ephesians 5, verse 12, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, even those things that are done in secret. Verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake. I blow the horn. I make the sound. Awake. Awake. Did you hear? Awake. If you sleep, awake. This is what the word of God is saying. Arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. Not physical death, you guys. Not the physical death. Arise from your spiritual death. Arise from being dead in your mind spiritually, in your eyes spiritually, in your ears spiritually, arise, arise, and Christ will give you light. Arise and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We are in an evil, the, the days are evil. If the days was evil back then and the days are even more evil right now and in, in that we cannot even teach, have our children watch a television show and not be exposed to things that the word of God says is an abomination, is, is evil and is darkness, fornication, adultery, um, homosexuality, all of that is in the word of God and the Bible calls it abomination and it is all over the television sexuality oh, immoral, immorality and sexuality vainness, pride it's all over the place it's in, it's in our let me tell you so you all know that I'm do I do the YouTube page and then on my vlogging I have my family on there too and my grandkids on there and we talk about the things of God and 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 um my whole aspect is just life as it is and how we deal with this life even with me being a spiritual empowerment leader there is still life there are still things that I have to deal with as a mother as a um a spiritual daughter, you know, I'm a spiritual mom and I got, I'm a spiritual daughter to a spiritual mom. Yeah, there are there. And then a wife being a wife and being a grandmother and being a mother to grown children. That is a whole different um, role in and of itself. I don't, I cannot be the same to them that I was when they were smaller because they're adults now. Now, my role has changed. I can't just tell them what to do and expect them to do what I tell them to do because they are grown now. They're going to make their own choices. So I have to be okay with giving them advice. And if they take the advice, they take it. But if they don't, I cannot control them and make them take that advice. They have the right to make their own choice and their own decision. But as a woman of God, I have the right to go into my prayer room and pray for them <laughs> and pray the word of God over their life. And so these are different principles and, and things that I want to be able to share with other people and to let others know that, hey, 
This is how we do this thing. This is how we live out this walk, this faith walk with our Lord and Savior, that even in the midst of this world, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of everything that is going on, believers can have fun. And it is not... um, Woo, what is the word that the, the youngins use? I don't know, but it is not um, corny <laughs> to be a Christian. It is not corny to live the Christian life and live it holy and sanctified and all that stuff. Um, me and the grand, my granddaughter was talking about making videos and we were saying, uh, she was saying, my mom, because she, she, she gets on YouTube, so... Oh, and this is what happened. We was doing a YouTube video, me and my granddaughter, and she was interviewing me and it went left. <laughs> the video, the, the interview, she was trying to interview me and we was doing the little uh, um, scene that we were going to put on YouTube and it went left. The And Oh, we, it was like a rap song that I was singing. And then it was, you know, I was saying positive words and I thought she was going to respond back with positive words. But her words that she said to me was, you know, you are not going to be rich or you can't be rich. You're not. And and I said, wait a minute, let's talk about this. What made you switch up on me? What made you begin to say those words? And I was really prodding her because I want to find out what what was it that triggered her mind to begin from going to the positive that we were doing into this kind of negative talk where, okay, now I'm not building you up. I'm bashing you. We have a now it's like this. Oh, I think this battle. You know how they have the battles back and forth and they do. You have these movies or these shows called Wild and Out. You know, I've seen them. I've watched them Wild and Out and they kind of talk about each other back and forth. So I want to know what was going on in, in her mind and where and what was it that she may have seen or watch that caused her to um, think this way and then behave and respond this way while we were acting out these scenes. And she said, well, I said, did you get it maybe from, you know, TV, YouTube? She said, probably YouTube. Yes, YouTube. But mama, it's nothing good on YouTube. This is what's on YouTube, all this stuff. And I said, oh, you said you made a good statement there, sweetheart. You you did. Because, um I said, we need to change that. What? So, so now I'm prodding her and I'm asking these questions. So what is it that we can do to change these things? What is it that we can do to change this? Can we create some more children um, friendly videos in which they will, that will empower them, that will um, inspire them? And we began to create um, better footage and better content that they will enjoy watching and be in, in, empowered and motivated at the same time. And so, so she was like, yeah, mama, we could do that. So we were just uh, thinking about these things. And I'm saying all of this, I'm saying all of this to say to you, that it is time for us to think about our lives. Think about our young people. Think about the next generation that is coming up. Think about the Gen X's and the millennials and the all these all the other young young girl generation, those are that are under you that are coming up. We as the older generation, I know you you know. I'm 50. I said it. I'm 50 and I'm I'm glad to be in this mature age now, the age of, of 50 and, and now I just want to reach reach back and and you know we got this I got two generations. I got my son, and I got my grandchildren and one day may I have the great grandchildren and and I want to pull that those two generations up. And I want to empower them and I want to build them up. My granddaughter said, Mama, 
the the um 13 year old she said mama all you do is talk about god that's all you do all you do is talk about god and i said well sweetheart that's all i, I mean that's what i know and and um my desire is for my whole family to to be saved and to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to live the Christian lifestyle. And she was asking me questions about that. And I was trying to explain it to her for her to understand the best that I could explain it to her. And my daughter was like, yeah, um, that's mama always... Mama always been that way. She always teach us about God and talk about the God things. And and that's that is what helped me get through a lot of um, challenges that I might face sometimes is knowing how to pray and knowing that I can go to God when I need to, that I can depend on God to help me through different things. And and even when I might be feeling emotional, I know that I can pray and ask God to help me through it. So it was just a really great conversation um, to have with the children. And I want to encourage you all to do the same with yours. But you need to know, you need to know this, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, um, children, of course, obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, for this is the first commandment that comes with a promise that it may be well with you and you may live long and on earth. That That is the one promise that comes um, with, it comes with the one commandment that comes with two promises. It says that you will live well and you will live long on earth if you do that. And then verse four says, and fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. Um, and bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So it is up to the parents, the fathers. This is a, it says, fathers, do not provoke your children. Stop, Daddy, quit yelling at the kids. The mom, quit yelling and cursing at the kids. Quit provoking them to anger. Quit provoking them and making them angry. They want to run out the house or run away from the home. It matters. How you treat your children matters. And the same for the children. Children, how you treat your parents matter. And I want to go on to verse 10. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle here. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. If we did not have anything to worry about here on earth, why would Paul admonish us to put on the whole armor of God? Why would he admonish us and tell us that we do not fight against flesh and blood? This is a daily fight. This is a daily warfare um, that we go through, even though we have victory in Jesus Christ. Just we have victory in Jesus Christ. But that does not mean that we will not come up against our position. And then the scriptures I just read to you before, where it says that we are the light. We should be living our lives a certain way that is different from those who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There is a difference. Verse 14 here, verse 13 says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all stand. 
14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which, which you will be able to quench all the fiery fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication be for all the saints and verse 19 says, and for me, the utterance may be given to me. So Paul is saying, pray for me too, that the, the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to speak, to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So Paul was in jail writing these things. Paul was in jail writing these letters to the church and and say and encouraging them and building them up and telling them to stand strong and understand that the enemy is not the people. The enemy is not flesh and blood. Um, I like these study Bibles. This is the word of life. This is the word of life study Bible. And it talks about the scriptures in which I just read. It says, who is the enemy? No matter who we are or what we do for a living, all of us are bound to face struggles in life. This is this is the truth. You cannot get around experiencing some type of trouble. But the Bible says that we do not have to allow it to become a burden to us. It goes on to say financial pressures, job loss, personality conflicts, time demands, injury, illness, emotional pain, death as jobs as Job's friend. Eliphaz wearily noted in Job 5, 7, he said, man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. So listen to this. It says, when faced with setbacks like these, people often tend to blame God for their circumstances or other people. Hi, Logan. Welcome, Logan. Um, I'm talking about Ephesians the in chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, and I'm giving a little excerpt about uh, these scriptures in, from the Our Study Bible. It says, however, scripture urges us to consider another more sinister source for trouble, what Paul called the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. So what I was explaining, Logan, and, and all of those that have just came on um, to the broadcast or that is watching the replay is that we, are, we don't fight against flesh and blood and that there is a spiritual realm that we have to deal with and that it is influencing our children. It, it is influencing the way we think, the way we act, our emotions, our feelings. It is influencing our life. But but we have the light of Christ in us in which we can we are walking in victory. We learn to walk in victory, the continuous victory of the Lord, and not allow these things to bother us. The light of Christ in us crushes out the darkness. So um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, I'm reading this excerpt as <laughs> excerpt. <laughs> it continues. Uh, by saying, certainly there's a place for human responsibility. But Paul is telling us that ultimately people are not our enemy. Sin and Satan are. 
This is something that we have to understand. We get so angry with people. We get so angry with the choices and decisions they make. And we be, we get in our flesh and we we launch back out at them and we want to respond in this emotional negative way and we have to understand that um we it is not their fault it's not completely their fault they have a will and they should be able to control but but we are responsible for how we respond we are responsible for how we act we, we cannot control anyone else's behavior and what they do, but we can control ours and we can control how we behave. Logan says, I think we are our own enemy. We can be our own enemy sometimes, Logan. I agree with you. It goes on to read, but Paul is telling us that ultimately people for People are not our enemy. Sin and Satan are. If we intend to stand up to the onslaught of these powerful adversaries, we must fight them on our own turf. The spiritual. Don't y'all be careful. You all be careful about looking at these different videos and watching these different things that t try to tell you that there is no spiritual realm. That, you know, those of us that talk about the spiritual realm is crazy and, and we don't and we are not sensible. Listen to the what the word of God is saying. If this was not true, Paul would not have had to talk to the church like this. The Bible is our manual. The Bible is a ma our manual on living, not just back then, but our living on today. There is nothing new under the sun. Absolutely nothing. Everything that's happening in the world today has already happened. And everything that's happening in the world today is in this Bible. And this Bible gives us a blueprint on how to handle our life. Mimi, hey, wonderful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Mimi. Good to see you, darling. Good to see you. Okay, so we we are evaluating and looking at Ephesians chapter um, 6, verses 10 to, through 13. It says, uh, of course, I'm, and I'm reading the excerpt about these verses, okay? It says, of course, it is very difficult. I need to go back. Forgive me. If we intend to stand up to the onslaught of these powerful adversities, adversaries, we must fight them on our own turf, which are, is the spiritual, with weapons appropriate to the conflict. The weapons that are appropriate to the conflicts are found in chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, where Paul tells us, stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then he goes on to say, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And don't forget verse 18 that says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Be watchful. So pay attention, you guys. Be watchful for all this stuff that's going on in the world. This little stuff they keep putting in these movies and these videos and your in the cartoons your children are watching. Stop letting your kids sit around and watch YouTube all by themselves, and you're not monitoring what they're watching. And I'm going to talk about that music too. Yes, uh huh. I'm going to get into the music too. That's not going to be for right now. It's going to be for another day. But I'm going to get into the music. That you letting your kids listen to, that you listen to while you're in the car and you bumping that music and you got it on high. And just because the kids are small, you think, oh, this ain't bothering them. Yeah, it is. You're programming your children. 
But we're going to talk about that another time. Logan, what do you say? I'm listening to this while I'm doing schoolwork. It's something different for for once. Oh, Logan, I am so glad that you are on and I am glad to have you listening to me. Yes. And I pray that um, God gives you that wisdom and understanding and everything that you need to be excellent in your work and excellent in uh, in uh, your studies. That wisdom. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And oh, Logan, if you um, sign up, if you sign up and subscribe to my website, I can send you um, your uh, prayer of excellence for schooling so I can send you a prayer for you to pray uh, while you are doing your schooling. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue with this. We are talking about knowing who the enemy is and, and how to fight against him and standing true according to uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 uh, through 18. So let's continue. Paul, in this um, excerpt, it goes on to say, of course, it can be very difficult to persuade people of that in this day and age. Secular thinking dismisses all talk of the supernatural realm. Did, did not say that. I said that. Just about. I didn't say those exact words, but I said it. Oh, and also, it's also in the live chat. I always have um, all my friends and those that come in the live chat kind of communicate with each other, introduce themselves to each other because this is a community. I'm not just talking to you. I love for you all to communicate with me back and communicate with one another. Now, sometimes I kind of keep going on and on while I'm trying, especially I'm trying to stay focused. I'll continue to um, read, but I'll always go back to the live chat so that um, you all know this is a community and I, I want to communicate with you and let you all know that we are in this together. We are in this together. Okay, secular thinking dismisses all talk of the supernatural realm as so much superstition left over from the ancient world. At the same time, advocates, advocates of the cult have stimulated people's curiosity and have developed in many a fascination with evil rather than a determination to overcome it. You will notice this more and more, especially now that there is a fascination towards what is evil instead of trying to overcome what is evil. It goes on to say, nevertheless, the Bible is straightforward. There is no twist, no curves, no, no sugar coating. The Bible is very straightforward. It declares that evil forces exist in the spiritual realm that have a substantial influence on the world and human events. Paul called them principalities. The word is often used in the New Testament sometimes as here referring to fallen angels, such as the reference in Romans 8, 38, Colossians 2, 15, sometimes to human rulers as in Titus 3, verse 1, translated authorities in the New King James Version or sometimes to any type of ruler other than God himself, as in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Sometimes the presence of evil powers is evident. Guys, this is true. This is absolutely true. I don't want you to get sidetracked. I don't want you to... Um, to be unaware of these things, I want you to have the wisdom and I want you to have the knowledge that is necessary to understand this truth that is in the Bible. 
Logan, you says, I can't only watch this for eight more minutes. Then I go to the online class. Okay, thank you, Logan. And I pray that your online class goes excellent and you have a great time on there. I remember when I was doing online classes. Oh, and before you go, can you tell me what you're studying? I would love to, to excuse me, I would love to know. Sometimes the presence of evil powers is evident as in demon possession, according to Luke eleven fourteen. However, Satan and his hosts have numerous other ways to influence human activity and carry out their ultimate purpose. The cap capture of people away from God. That is the devil's ultimate purpose purpose is to capture people away from God. For example, two means through which they can work. Two means through which they can work is through our belief system and and then the other one is human institutions and leaders. Okay, Logan, he said, I'm in algebra. I'm only in a great cool. Awesome, Logan. Logan, I am so happy that you are tuning into our live stream. Um, and I hope that what I am saying is adding some value to you, especially as you are uh, going through school and you are learning some things. Uh, I don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed because I want to continue to bring you content and um, also keep praying for you as you finish up school. And I'm Again, I'm glad you are, but pay attention to your class. Make sure you get online and you pay attention in class. Yay! Welcome, Logan, to the community. Okay, so it says belief system. Philosophies and worldviews have a powerful effect on the way people live by introducing lies into the very principalities upon which the, which enter societies our base. The evil one can wreak incredible havoc on the world. So consider, for instance, the beliefs that are fueled with nausea. Eventually, they lead to the most destructive war in history. Woo, that's true. They brought about extermination camps in which millions of Jews and others were slaughtered. So this is the enemy don't put, listen, people don't just come on with these ideas all on their own. People don't just come on with these evil ideas all on their own. They are influenced. They are influenced by a spiritual realm. That, that is one of the reasons why it is so important that you pay attention to what you listen to, why you, and you pay attention to what you hear, and pay attention to what you allow in your eyes to see. Yes, I said it. You can't sit up and watch all of these shows. You know you have a problem. Listen, you cannot be sitting up watching any kind of show on television Shows that have women have shown their bodies and, and have men and women on there kissing and hugging. It does something to you. You cannot act like it don't do nothing to you because it's not tr true. You will be telling me a flat out lie if you say that it is not doing nothing to you. <laughs> Hi there, 100 I am talking, I'm actually talking about, I'm going over Ephesians chapter 6 uh, verses 10 through 18 in the Bible. And I'm talking about how there is a spiritual realm. And if it wasn't the evil force, then Paul would not have had to write to the churches and let them know that we are not dealing with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the dark age. So I have my my um, study Bible here, the word in life study Bible. And I am sharing out of this what uh, this article that was written in regards to the scriptures that we have read. So that's what I'm talking about. You said everyone knows that. No, 
Everybody don't know that, trust me. There is some people out there that says all we need is Jesus. Yes, all we need is Jesus. But you must understand that we as believers have to walk in that victory and know that there is an evil force out there. And, and, and when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, As you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you now are adopted into the sonship with God. And you have all of these, these uh, what do you call it, advantages of being a Christian. And you can speak against these things or you can stand strong and you can protect your mind from these evil thoughts, all that stuff. Okay, so, so uh, Mimi, you said... Just stopped in for the support. I've tried to prepare for Thanksgiving dinner. See you in another live. Okay, Mimi, I'm glad you stopped in. I know you are. You always cooking. I know you could hit the, a good meal for Thanksgiving. I know Logan. Logan says Thanksgiving is two days away. Already prepared, Logan. Us folks. <laughs> I said us folks. We we get ready early today. I will be cutting up all the vegetables and putting them in containers so that I could use it for my dressing. I cut up the onions and the, and the um, celery and, and peppers and things like that. So yeah, we start getting ready early. And a lot of times we, we get ready and we try to have everything done the day before Thanksgiving so that on Thanksgiving day, there's no cooking. All we have to do is eat, mm, eat much, much, much. Okay. Let us get back to our regular broadcasts. Let us get back to the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to everyone that stopped, that has stopped in and, and given me time and given me support. And then thank you for those that have given me a thumbs up. I appreciate it very much. Uh, oh, so you're just doing the stuff that you can put in the fridge. Yes, Logan, I'm doing the stuff I can put in a refrigerator. Um, okay, so... Let's keep going. Again, none of this. I got to. OK, go back. It says they brought about extermination camps in which millions of Jews and others were slaughtered. They disrupted entire nations and economies. Indeed, the aftermath of the dark era is still with us again. None of this is to suggest that humans are excused for response from responsibility. Okay, Logan, don't you miss your class? You go on the class. <laughs> you go on the class. You could catch this later. You could watch this on the replay. You go and you you uh, do a great. You do great in your class and come back and tell me that you had a great session. Uh, leave it in the comment box. Bye for now. OK. They disrupted entire nations and economies. Indeed, the aftermath of that dark era is still with us. The aftermath of the Holocaust, that's still with us. We can't ignore that kind of we cannot ignore that. So, again, none of this is to suggest that humans are excused from that responsibility. But behind the visible, knowable element of human choice, one can detect or at least suspect the activity of forces with supernatural ability and evil intent, prompting people to accept and act on falsehood. That's why we cannot be too careful about the ideas we embrace. We cannot be too careful about the ideas we embrace, whether they come from religious teachers. Did you? It doesn't matter where they come from. We cannot be too careful. We have to examine the spirits. Even me. Don't just take my word for it. Study the Bible. Find out if it's true. Let it bear witness with your spirit. If what I am sharing with you is it registers in your spirit and you don't get that. It, there's a there's this stoplight. I call it a stoplight that you'll have in your spirit when certain certain things isn't right or certain teachings isn't right. 
You get this very uncomfortable spilling, feeling. What that is, is the Holy Spirit trying to let you know, uh-uh, uh, red light, uh-uh, something about that is just not right. You pay attention to that. And this is what um, we are speaking of in this, in this passage. It says, um, this is why we cannot be too careful about the ideas we embrace, whether they come from religious teachers, from educators, government leaders, or the media. Ideas have consequences, both in individual lives and in entire nations. When a president or vice president or any leader make a decision, it, there's consequences to that decision. And it don't just affect their lives. I used to tell my sons, you know, babe, what you do, it just it don't just affect you. You the choices and the decisions you make don't just affect you. You go whatever it is that you're doing out there, it don't just affect you. Your behavior don't just affect you. It affects me. It affects our family. And and I think that so many people and even our children that are growing up today have become so selfish that they don't realize. And I'm sorry that that might sound harsh, but people are not realizing how the choices and the decisions that they are making individually affects other people. It don't just affect you. Okay, I said it. It goes on to say, our best protection against deception is a grounding in biblical truth. Ephesians 6.14 reads that it says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So gird your waist with truth, which is the word of God. That the biblical truth, that's the best protection that we can have against, against deception. And so there were Two things um, through which the enemy or darkness can work. And one was um, belief systems. And the next one is human institutions and leaders. We will go through this. We will go through this and then, and then you know, I might be done. <laughs> I appreciate you hanging out. You all hanging out with me. Tommy, you still there? Somebody's still there. Thank you. Human institutions and leaders, human systems and people in authority make ideal targets of satanic activities because of their influence on others. Listen, listen. The enemy will, will um, use those who have the most influence. The those that have a lot of um, uh, struggles in life, sometimes the reason why they have a lot of struggles in life is because of their influential base. Uh, a lot of people might, uh, they, they blame God and they want to ask God, why am I struggling or why am I going through all of this stuff or, or why is all this happening to me? But we have, look at, if you look at that person, and you look at their life, it is something about them that makes them so unique and, and so different that even in their wrong behavior, they have people following them. It is something unique about that person that the enemy is trying to keep captive and not allow them to be what God has truly designed them to be. And if the enemy can keep them locked up in pain or all these different issues of the world and not step into what God designed them for and created them for, then they will never be able to make the influence that they were designed to make. Listen, most times they are very influential people. Anybody will follow them. Even in their wrong, people are following them. These, these individuals were meant 
to lead nations, to lead organizations, to lead people, but not for the sake, for Satan's sake, but for righteousness. And the enemy uses that by keeping them tripped and trapped up. That's why you have to be grounded in biblical truth so that you can be protected against this type of deception. Okay. So it goes, it says here that Satan's act, it says human systems and people are author, in authority, make ideal targets of satanic activity because of their influence on others. In the first century, one has only to consider the character and especially the spiritual choices of such groups as the Pharisees. According to, you can find the reference to this in Matthew chapter 23, verse 13 through 15, and then verses 31 through 36. The Jewish council also look at Acts chapter 7, verses 51 through 60. And then the Herods, Herods, look at Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. The Seaphesus look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 3. And then Pilate. See, these are all leaders. These are all kings and the councilmen. Mind you, in the biblical days, this was the, the political arena. John, John chapter 18, verses 37 through 38. And then chapter 19, 10 through 11. And 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 8. And then um, the Caesar is another example, especially Nero. He was, a, this is an example, and you can find that example in Acts chapter 25, verse 12. I move my hands and fingers a lot. I hope that doesn't bother you. It says, to appreciate the counterattack that Satan must have launched after the coming of Christ and the founding of the church. Scripture, a, scripture asserts that human authorities are established by God to carry out good purpose, according to Romans 13, 1 through 7, 1 through 7. But because they are operated by humans, they are vulnerable to influence of evil spiritual forces. Paul knew that all too well. Paul knew that. Paul was Paul experienced it, and when he wrote this particular letter to the church, he was experiencing it then because he was in jail for something that he was not um he was in jail and he was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong to cause himself to be in jail when he wrote this letter. It was spirit, it was spiritual influences, negative spiritual influences, evil is spiritual influences that caused him to be put in jail during this time. But Paul, I like Paul because Paul was like, y'all can't do nothing to me that my God don't approve of and allow. So I'm cool. I'm going to sit up in here. I'm going to write these letters to my church. Just, I'm going to influence them, keep on doing the work of the Lord, even though I'm locked in here on, in chains. <laughs> Paul knew that all too well. As he wrote to the Ephesians, he sat chained in a Roman soul chained to a Roman soldier for no other crime than the preaching of the gospel. Did you just see? See, I didn't even read that ahead of time. I told I, I just told you all he was sitting in jail. He was chained to another Roman to a Roman soldier for no other crime than preaching the gospel. And you can find that reference in Ephesians chapter six, verses 19 through 20. I also read that to you as well. And on another occasion. He instructed Timothy, the pastor of Ephesus, to have the people pray for the kings and all who are in authority. 
that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all good godliness and reverence because God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, 1 and 4. This is what we should be doing right now. We should be praying for our president, praying for President Trump, praying for President elect Biden. We should be praying for our leaders that God because God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Pray for the kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Going on, there are many other ways in which the powers of darkness attempt to subvert the purpose of God. But it is pointless for us to try to determine at any moment whether something is being caused by a wicked spiritual power. The, he said it's pointless. It's pointless for us to try to determine at any moment whether something is being caused by a wicked spiritual power. A precaution with that leads only to foolish suspicion. Uh, speculation. So Paul gives us a far more positive, constructive strategy for standing firm against our spiritual enemies. So this is this this is what we should be doing on a daily basis. If we stand strong, stand our ground. Not those glasses begin to hurt, <laughs> but I need to see. Paul gives us a far more positive, constructive strategy. Here it is. I'm going to read it to you. Standing firm against our spiritual enemy, put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 11. The armor is made up entirely of spiritual weapons. Put on, the, on truth, on righteousness, the gospel of peace, put on faith, Put on salvation, the word of God and prayer. If we do those things, we can stand against the fiery darts of the enemy by doing those things. It says by learning to wear and will and weld these powerful armaments, we can resist the carefully laid plans of the devil. And when the fight is over, when the fight is over, still be standing. Can I get somebody to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We still stand. We still stand. Hallelujah. Now let us do a little worship and praise. Hallelujah. Let us do a little worship and praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. Something about the name of Jesus. It is something about that name. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I don't own that rights to this music. I want to listen to it for us to worship the Lord and praise the Lord. I want you to know that I love you and so does God. I love you and so do God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise your heavenly Father and glory to God. Praise your heavenly Father. Glory to God. Lord God, we love you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. We lift up your name. Don't you know there's power in praising the Lord? There is power in worshiping God. And so, Learn how to make that an active part of your life is praising God, worshiping God. Of course, pray. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, God. Glory to God. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for staying. Thank you all that joined in on the live chat. Thank you all that gave me a thumbs up. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May God keep you. That's what Lady Wisdom, I watch Lady Wisdom speak. Catholic Casas, she said, may God bless you. May God keep you. There's nothing like the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess the name of Jesus. Woo! This is a time to begin to confess his name, to tell everybody you know about Jesus. Yes. It is the sweetest name I know. Hey. I love the man Jesus. Oh, how I love the man Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. The individual that's singing this has passed away recently. Um, well, he's passed away recently. Um, Kirk Franklin is featured on this song, but God bless his soul. He was a legend in singing. He was a legend. Holy Ghost is in me. He me alone. Sometimes I get in this house. Sometimes I'm I'm in this house and I'm just I'm praising God, glorifying His name. Oh, something about the name Jesus. David praised the Lord all the time. David made worshiping and praising God part of his lifestyle. That's what he did. He made it part of his lifestyle. Oh, you will feel so much different if you made praising God, worshiping God, loving on the Lord part of your lifestyle. Something that you did continuously on a regular basis. It's just who you are. It's part of you to love on God. He wants you to do that. He wants you to do that. All through the Old Testament, the biggest thing that God was always trying to do was to get his people to love on him, to love him the way that he loved them. He loved them so much that he delivered them out of Pharaoh's hand. And then he loved us so much that he sent his son to redeem us because of what Adam did, the a mistake Adam made from eating from the tree of life. We had we lost our connection with God when he did that. So he sent Jesus so that we can have that connection with him again, so that we can receive that Holy Spirit. Which is so, it's, which is just like when Adam used to walk in the, in the garden and God speak to him in the cool of the day. We have that opportunity to be able to experience God like that now. Except we have his spirit that is with us. Jesus said, I must go away that you may receive the comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit. And that's when we, all we have to do is ask for it. He doesn't unwillingly give it to us. He gives it to us when we ask him for it. When we ask him for the Holy Spirit. When we ask Jesus to come into our heart and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And we confess our sins to him and tell him that we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. 
And now we want to live a life that is that is um, sufficient and a life live a life unto Him, where He is the King of our life and the ruler of our soul. I want you all to go forth and have a super fantastic day. God bless you. Know that I love you and so do God. God loves you first and so do I. Bye for now. See you next time.